bam, in the fridge. I literally would just be like standing here, I could be dancing, I could be having a glass of wine. There's no reason to skip breakfast because you're in a hurry. That is like the worst excuse. I'm literally meal prepping right now, so I'm inviting you guys to be in the kitchen with me. And of course, like I have this down to a science now, I can do it with my eyes closed, I can prep everything in like 40 minutes. So I just kind of wanted to invite you into the kitchen today, literally to watch me go through it. Meal prepping is, is super easy, but if you're not used to doing it, it's really overwhelming. And so that's why people just avoid doing it all together. So at first, you know, your meal prepping time, maybe two hours. Um, you might over prep. You might not prep enough to get you through a few days. And that just comes with practice. And I promise, promise, promise that within a few weeks, if you really take the time to do this, you will have it down. You will know exactly how much you need of things when you go to the store, how much time it's gonna take you in the kitchen, how much rice you need to cook up, how much chicken you need to cook up, how long it's gonna last you in the fridge. Anything new is going to feel like a lot of work at first until you get it down. In this house, we do eat a lot of meat. We keep our protein really high. Like chicken breast, I do a lot of ground chicken. We do lean ground turkey. I do lean ground beef or bison. The carb sources, we generally stick to oats, sweet potatoes, white potato, brown rice, quinoa, um, rice cakes. My veggies usually consist of a lot of green veggies because they have great fiber, they're lower in sugar. Um, they honestly just make me feel the best. So we do a lot of cucumber, spinach, I do tomatoes. We do a lot of asparagus, broccoli, and I think of what else? Green beans. Uh, so yeah, sticking to green leafy things. Kale is great, spinach, that kind of stuff. That's pretty much kind of what I prep throughout the week, honestly. My snacks and stuff like protein powders, I either have packets or I just throw them in Ziploc bags and take them to go. So I don't really need to prep anything with that. It works for us to throw our chicken in a large container and then every day we kind of just pull it out and throw it on a salad. However, some of you who have to go to work and you will not be home, you need to take your containers. It will save you a lot of time when you prepare your food in the kitchen to put them in the container and have them just stacked up to grab, you know, Monday through Wednesday, cook again on Wednesday and then grab the rest of the week. So these little guys, there's you get like a package of six of them at Kroger for $1.99. Um, if you have a six pack bag, your containers like this, you can throw your meals in and have stacked up in the fridge. Um, another thing I like to use sometimes is mason jars. You don't have to spend a ton on fancy, you know, meal prep containers. All right, whatever's going to stack well for you in the fridge is just fine. Really like to be in the kitchen prepping this as much as I can rely on a food steamer or my crock pot to cook things while I can do other things that's a win for me right on the George Foreman I cook normally about three pounds of chicken on here at a time or on my grill outside and then I throw it in a container and we use it throughout the week so if you cook this ahead of time you can either Cut your chicken up and measure it out into your salads or whatever you're having. Have them in those individual containers ready to go. Or do our method where you put all of it in one large container and then each day you just kind of pull it out and cut up what you need for that meal. Another option for cooking your meat. You could do the one pan method. So I have a pan out. I could throw my chicken breast in here. I could throw in the potatoes that I'm going to be having for the week and some vegetables. You could put in green beans, broccoli, um, if you want to add a couple carrots, something like that, and just bake all of it together. The juices from the chicken and the water from the veggies will keep your chicken um, juicy so it's not going to dry out. And then my third method, and this is super easy, you can have this going while you're running you know, errands or going somewhere with your family is the crock pot method. You would just throw your three pounds of chicken in there, add a little bit of water, cook it on low until it starts shredding apart. Normally if I do ground chicken or ground turkey, I just cook it in a huge batch on the stove. So I prefer to cook it plain and then when I actually go to use the meat in that meal, season it up. These are my favorites. Um, salt free Mrs. Dash ones. These do have like three grams of carbs. So 
if you're getting ready for a show, you might wanna watch those. Many of you who are working a nine to five job and you're gone all day, this is when you really need to take advantage of your slow cooker. If you notice you're running low on chicken, open up your package of chicken, dump it in the slow cooker, turn it on low, and it'll be ready when you get home. Protein pancakes, yes, you can prepare them ahead of time. I would cook them up and wrap them in tin foil, each one individually in tin foil, and then you'd put all five in a bag and in the fridge. The next thing that I would throw on is some of my carbs. If I'm cooking quinoa or brown rice for the week, I throw it in my steamer. In my steamer, you can tear things. So I could have, you know, green beans going in the bottom. I could have brown rice and quinoa going. I could throw broccoli in there. I could have three or four things cooking in there. I could do potatoes too. So I tear it up with whatever I'm gonna make. Another method that I love for cooking my carbs is my sweet potatoes in the crock pot. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that because people always want to know how I do my sweet potatoes. They stay really juicy. Just cut the ends off. I look for any like yucky spots on them. Normally I cut them in half. I rinse them off. And the water that's on them, I let just drip and I throw them right in the crock pot. And I cook these on low. I don't know like four hours or so just until you can poke them with a fork and they're nice and soft there's sweet potatoes bam those go for four hours you don't have to touch them potatoes would be going I'd have brown rice going my chickens cooking um, basically that would have taken me like 10 minutes it's all cooking on its own I don't have to do a thing right um, Oats. I usually keep oats to breakfast, so you have a couple options with that. If you are someone who has to get to work in the morning and you're on the go, what I would do is either overnight oatmeal or I would do a protein shake in the morning, pop your oats in and run out the door. So if you're doing overnight oatmeal, I use a mason jar, I measure out my oats, some water, you can add in whatever your mixins are, so if you're adding protein powder, egg whites, if you add nuts to it, if you do banana, chia seeds, whatever, you just dump it all in, lid it off, and you put it in the fridge. The oats will soak up the liquid overnight and you'll be ready to go in the morning. So you literally can just walk out the door. Here's a couple options for you. Salads. It is awesome if you just layer your salads in these containers. So you throw in your spinach, maybe your cucumber, tomato, whatever you're throwing in there. Just don't add your dressing. Oh, hey, 21 day fix containers. Okay, so you have your salad all in here. Just cover your dressing and stick it in with all your salad layered up and bam, okay? Make five of these, you're ready to go Monday through Friday. I honestly, I love to just be like super quick and easy. So you could, you know, earlier we were talking about prepping your rice and stuff in the steamer. You could layer broccoli, green beans, stuff like that in there, but I love the frozen steamer bags. I love to just throw these whenever we need veggies. It you know, they take four or five minutes in the microwave and they're ready for me. I also love to do zucchini noodles. So here's my trick for that. This is my spiralizer. I got it on Amazon. So all you have to do is chop the end off on each side. Put your zucchini end in here. Push it against that. Get your plate underneath and then or I like it with just a little bit of olive oil and apple cider vinegar. Okay, so there you go. So now I take my zucchini noodles, dump them in a container. Okay, so that's prepped for the week. So that's like, that's it in a nutshell. You have food cooking and then once it's cooked, you're like, okay, I need Monday through Wednesday breakfast. Throw in a container. I need Monday through Wednesday lunches. Stack in containers. Your snacks, stack it in container and then you're done. Now this would have taken me a total of probably 20 minutes to have chicken fully grilled on my George Foreman to throw in my carbs in my steamer, maybe with some veggies, throw sweet potatoes in the crock pot and spiralize some zucchini noodles. 
minutes. And then I would have spent maybe another 20 minutes portioning things out, measuring, and popping into my containers throughout the week. As you kind of practice with this, you will know how quickly your food is going to go bad and you'll start to learn exactly how much you need to prep for your family. Every family is different with foods that you like and how fast you go through it. You just have to practice it and start doing this and you will have it down to a science. I promise it is not as complicated as, complicated as it seems or as people like to make it sound. If you have any other questions about meal prepping, please leave them. Our goal is to make you learn how to make this work forever. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Smile, make a difference in someone's life. See ya.